<clears throat> okay, so happy birthday, B.V. Doshi. Uh, he is 94 years old today, a remarkable age. Born in 1927. On this day, the 26th of August. Uh, this uh, this architect, who actually was never trained as an architect, uh, arrived at, uh, at, at the highest uh, level of uh, accomplishment by uh, earning the you know the Pritzker Prize. But uh, it's not just that that the Pritzker Prize is a recognition that came late in life. But he had, I think, a very interesting life, and uh, he started. Uh, in India, first he studied um, for three years in an art school, not in an architecture school. Then he arrived in London with a friend, and there he learned about. Uh, I think he took part in a in a Siam uh, uh, conference, and uh, I don't. I imagine Le Corbusier was in London at that time. Anyway, he contacted Le Corbusier, asking him to work for him. And Le Corbusier accepted it, but told him, I, I, I cannot pay you. Yet, Doshi accepted the, the offer, and he started to work for Le Corbusier. I think he worked for almost four years in Paris, where he almost developed ulcer, getting very sick, probably in part thanks to the generosity of the great master, who didn't pay him. Anyway, then uh, he returned to India uh, to take care of some works by Le Corbusier, which we are, I am going to show today. So today I'll show two, I'll, I'll show two uh, presentations. I will make two presentations, one on Doshi and one on India, uh, Le Corbusier in India, uh, showing the works on which Doshi actually worked, helping uh, Le Corbusier. Uh, I start with this uh, quotation from him uh, in his own handwriting, love, uh, love what you do and do what you love and learn the art of constantly enjoying every minute of your life. This is what he said in 2006. So five years ago, he was uh, 89 years old. I don't think too many people at 89 would say this. And I also believe he knew something about suffering. Uh, I, if, he, uh, if he earned this joy, if he arrived at this joy, it's because he earned it. And maybe he earned it the, the, the hard way. I learned that when he was very young, he had a, an accident in a fire. And uh, since then, he worked all his life with a limp. He had a problem with, uh, he had a problem with uh, one leg. And yet, look at him at, at, eight, at 94, uh, being alive and uh, acknowledged and recognized as an architect. Although, as I said, he never studied formally architecture. I also begin with this poem from uh, Le Corbusier, and I actually learned about this poem from him. Doshi quoted in an interview uh, with him uh, this poem by Le Corbusier, which I think is very uh, important, both to understand him and to understand Le Corbusier, or uh, anyone who uh, creates. Uh, so uh, the acrobat is not a puppet. He devotes his life to activities in which, in perpetual danger of death, he performs extraordinary movement of infinite difficulty with disciplined exactitude and precision, free to break his neck and his bones and be crushed. Nobody asks him to do this. Nobody asks him any thanks. He lives in an extraordinary world of the acrobat. Result, most certainly, he does things which others cannot. So obviously Le Corbusier uh, loved the acrobat and I imagine um, Doshi loved the acrobat as well. And in a certain way, they themselves, Le Corbusier and uh, Doshi were so-called acrobats because they chose an unconventional uh, path in architecture and they created um, often unconventionally. And I think, uh, most great creators, that's what they do. 
I would say all of them actually are ac acrobats. And if they are not acrobats, they don't arrive at that exceptionalism which uh, uh, similar works have. So this was the man. This is the man. What am I saying was? But when I think about his age, it's incredible. But um, the architects in general uh, live long lives. There are important architects today who are all over 90. Alvaro Cesar also, Kenneth Frampton will be 91 today, not today, in November this year. Uh, Peter Eisenman 89, but uh, Richard Meyer, no, Richard Meyer is two years um, younger than Eisenman, who is actually his cousin. But there are, there are uh, important architects who have a very advanced age. Uh, look what he says, Doshi. I think architecture is a matter of transformation. Transformation of all adverse situations into favorable conditions. Now, this is what Doshi said, but uh, someone like Peter Eisenman, since I mentioned him, would say the opposite. Transformation of all favorable conditions into adverse situations because it is the conception of Peter Eisenman, or at least this is what he declared, that the architecture which truly moves one is uh, not the one that comforts you. In other words, not one where the favorable conditions are uh, uh, encouraged. Anyway, Doshi was an interesting man. Well, again, I, why am I saying was? Because he probably still runs his architecture office in Ahmedabad. Um, but I do find him as an inspiring figure because think about it, you know, you are born in India, uh, you don't study architecture and then you arrive at working with Le Corbusier and he even worked for a while with Louis Kahn. In fact, he said, Doshi said, my guru is Le Corbusier and my yogi is Louis Kahn. And some months ago, I asked uh, many students here Please tell me who is your guru and who is your yogi. And of uh, the, you know, at least 2,000 students uh, to whom I addressed this question, only one answered who said, uh, my guru is um, uh, Rem Kolhas and my yogi is uh, Vyarke Ingels. Uh, but then I asked him, well, what about um, you know, the spiritual side of uh, Kolhas and, and Ingels, because when we talk about a guru and we talk about a yogi, it's impossible not to think about a, a spiritual element in, in, in what they represent or represent it. And then that student didn't answer back. Well, I guess he was um, puzzled by my question because indeed you wouldn't associate Rem Kolhas and Bjarke Ingels with uh, an explicit spirituality. Anyway, design is nothing but a humble understanding of materials, a natural instinct for solutions and the respect for nature. Uh, his, his, uh, his statements are not very provocative and they are rather you know, common sense, so to speak. Now, Doshi and Le Corbusier. Here are, I show this uh, picture in, uh, in, an invita in, in, in the message I sent today. Uh, you know, I imagine Le Corbusier trusted him and, uh, you know, because he facilitated, uh, you know, the coming into being of the works of Le Corbusier in India. And I imagine he was pleased with uh, Doshi's work in his office on uh, Rue de Sèvres in Paris. Here they are again uh, inside the building uh, that I'm going to show in detail uh, later. Uh, and um, I'm sure Doshi learned a lot from uh, Le Corbusier. Here they are again. Uh, this is Doshi. Uh, and uh, of course, this is uh, Le Corbusier. Again, the two of them. Did at that time Doshi think that one day he will, uh, you know, uh, earn the most, uh, you know, uh, famous uh, prize in architecture? Probably not, but he did it. Anyway, moving forward.
It's like a father and the son, no? Uh, but, but the son now is 94 years old. You see, this is how life uh, is, you know, and how time advances. So on the left, Le Corbusier, on the, uh, Le Corbusier died at 78, swimming in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, something that, I don't know, I read that something that maybe he committed suicide, uh, Le Corbusier, but uh, we don't know. He died while swimming and uh, Toshi, the young man on the right is now 94 years old. So uh, moving forward, Doshi and Khan, because he was also, he had the, the, the chance to, to uh, be associated with Khan. I don't know, I don't know if he worked for Khan, but, but he, uh, he facilitated, just like in the case of uh, his relationship with Le Corbusier, works by Le Corbusier to come into being in Ahmedabad. He also um, uh, helped uh, Khan with his works in, uh, in India, uh, with his work in India. So here they are. Well, I guess considering the proximity between the physical proximity between the two, I guess there was, there was already a, a relationship between them. And now you understand why Doshi said his guru was Le Corbusier and his yogi was Louis Kahn. Uh, you know, with such, a, with such a guru and with such a, a, a yogi, uh, you do have the chance to, uh, to develop, uh, to grow uh, professionally in, uh, in a fruitful and significant way. Here they are again, on the very right, uh, Doshi and uh, near him, uh, Louis Kahn. Okay. Again, him and, and Khan. I truly think that the students in my country and uh, not just in my country, and maybe not just students, also young architects, and maybe not just even young architects, maybe anyone who loves architecture uh, benefits from guiding marks, uh, mentors, if you want. And that's why I think it's important to know very well the works of important architects. Because if you find some affinity between yourself and, and the work of a, an accomplished architect, you can, you can choose that architect to be, even if that architect is not alive, but the works are alive, you can choose him or her as your mentor. It's important to have guiding marks. And without those guiding marks, you, you can be completely lost in the ocean of information because there is so much information now in books, in magazines, on the web, that if you don't have some guiding marks, you, 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 can, uh, you can get lost indeed. Now here he is in, in, in older age. He returned to India and he developed a, a very um, a fruitful, uh, uh, you know, architectural life there. And maybe not just architectural. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I cannot read, it's unbelievable, you know, it's, it's the, the tab with the notations and I cannot see the first line of this statement here. So I have to read from, from public projects to educational institutes, villas to low income housing. His work, meaning Doshi's work, reflects the quality of humility and the sensitivity to the site and its people, as if emerging organically from the ground to provide shelter and the perspective on the outside world. He recalls his time with Le Corbusier as a kind of theater that he was witnessing, his childlike curiosity, which is refreshingly evident still absorbing the current of the times. His buildings in turn are like street plays, a commentary on the culture and politics of a time and people. Perhaps that is why, as we talk this day, while Kamala, practices Hindustani classical music in another room, his home feels like home. It has a sense of warmth and familiarity as if one had been there, here before. It is a representation of who Doshi is himself, wise, funny, and full of stories that live between reality and mythology, past and present, architecture and life. This is what this person wrote, Komal Shamar, Sharma, 
Now I read myself that actually uh, Doshi was very, very fond of his grandfather, um, who was immersed in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, fables, in uh, in a uh, fabled um, imagination, who was uh, uh, who was able to to transmit to to Doshi uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, half fantastical uh, uh, sense of reality, and. Um, I think this helps him, you know, and we don't have today in the present, in the world, this connection with the mythical past. Uh, but that mythical past uh, is, I think, very, very important if, if we could connect with it. Uh, so I guess uh, this Komal Sharma uh, pointed somehow uh, in, in, in this short um, uh, text about uh, Toshi in this direction. I'll show some drawings which, uh, which exemplify what I just said. Uh, he drew, he, he didn't look, draw like a, like a typical architect. You know, his drawings are, uh, uh, you know, poetical, uh, uh, free-spirited, uh, sometimes with a folky side, if you want, immersed in the traditions of his country uh, and the culture of his country. And we are talking about a major culture, a very old and very deep and very wide, and that is the Indian culture. Now, what we see here is actually, a, I don't know, a lithograph or a, this is this was made by Le Corbusier showing the trajectory of the sun uh, at the two solstices, the winter solstice, uh, this one, and the summer solstice, this one. Uh, but we see all kinds of things here on his table. Uh, and, and look at this, if you would make such a drawing, such a so-called rendering uh, in, in most uh, architecture schools today, you would be considered naive or uh, I don't know how. But, but uh, Doshi understood that uh, being connected with your own culture, meaning his own culture and with uh, his own past was a positive thing. And I, thought, I think it was, although he was a creative, uh, modern uh, architect. Also, it's interesting that he didn't employ the typical uh, rendering techniques. I'll end this presentation with a project for a competition he did where he used uh, typical uh, representations of today, you know, like renderings. I, I value more these works where he was truly himself uh, even in the way he, uh, uh, you know, find, found, uh, uh, you know, appropriate to represent uh, architecture. Now, uh, I'll show, I found this on website, 15 best works by B.V. Doshi, every architect should visit. Uh, again, you know, it's, 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 it's this tab, which I cannot get rid of, and I cannot read, uh, ah, I, I think I can, I can move it. In my grandparents' garden, watching monkeys play. Uh, um, just a second. Okay. Uh, yes, watching monkeys play, peacocks and, and peahens dancing, and the tortoise getting comfortable under the winter sun while we sit and wonder about the miracles of life is a family ritual. In the evening's golden light, uh, filters uh, through uh, a big neem tree from the garden into the house. My grandfather sits there every day, almost religiously watching this tree and conversing. I often join him and then the dialogue begins. Childlike fascination, curiosity and wonder take over and, and logic has no meaning. I, I, I read again this, and logic has no meaning. He takes me into a dream world every time through the narration of imaginary stories intertwined with mythology and the entire atmosphere begins to feel like a theater performance. Engrossed in the words of this storyteller, I lose sense of history, time, and place. I begin to discover the unfathomable world and the magic of life that fascinates me even today at age 91. So this is what he declared at 91. 
And I think this text, this testimony from Erdoshi is very important. You know, first of all, we would never think of suspending, uh, you know, logic and, uh, you know, uh, history, uh, time and place. In other words, to uh, uh, embrace the ahistorical, uh, the, in a way, eternity. You know, we don't think in such terms because we are, we are enslaved. We are the prisoners of a very narrow understanding of what time is and uh, 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 almost religious belief in what we call reason, its majesty reason. But even Wolf Briggs, whom I interviewed, uh, I had a discussion with uh, being in Sala Freshelor at uh, the University of Architecture, Yon Mink, in Bucharest, I asked him, what do you uh, recommend uh, young architects and students? And he said, don't think. Yes, that's what he said, don't, don't think. Now that don't think connects with this, uh, uh, you know, suspicion of this uh, uh, highly, uh, uh, you know, uh, overappreciated uh, reason or logic. Anyway, moving forward, because I think we can learn a lot from other cultures, from other people, and certainly from someone like Doshi, and certainly from a culture as rich as the one uh, India has. And look at these drawings, you know, and they, are, they are colorful, they are joyous, they are artistically interesting, and they are philosophical, and they are the works of someone who proved himself in architecture. Uh, these, these drawings too. He was able to build, he knew how to build, but, but he liked this kind of, uh, you know, uh, drawings where you can see the life that these buildings are supposed to, to, to receive or to house uh, expressed in, not in a rigid way, you know, so-called professional way. This drawing is, is I would say, uh, influenced by Louis Kahn. Uh, um, and then uh, one influenced by, uh, you know, the, the graphic representations of his own uh, culture and country. Okay, and now uh, we see uh, buildings built by B. V. Doshi. The most important projects from the site rethinking the future. In all of B. V. Doshi's uh, works, we can see a yearning to stay rooted to where he comes from. The courts, the verandas, the internal gardens, the spaces for community assembly, which form a spine to all his designs. Following are some of his best works of B. V. Doshi, which every person must visit once. I'm afraid I misspelled his uh, second initial, uh, not uh, V, but J. Uh, I don't know how I arrived there. Uh, I, I, I apologize for that. I imagine this is the correct name, B. V. Doshi. And uh, the, the two first initials, uh, unfortunately, I do not know what they stand for. I tried to memorize, but I didn't. Anyway, if we know the name Doshi, uh, although it is understood a common name in, in, uh, in India, it's, uh, it's good enough because he was an uncommon man with a common name. An uncommon name, a man with a common name. You know, uh, again, the first architect from India who received the Pritzker Prize in architecture. Now, a, lo a local cost housing uh, in 1982, and I admire this project very much. He received the Aga Khan Award for Architecture in 1996 uh, for this project and is a very important award. In certain respects, I value it more than the Pritzker. 
uh, it's it's an award that that um, acknowledges uh, works done for the Islamic world, and uh, I, I you know all the projects that are awarded by the Aga Khan uh, Award in architecture are uh, uh, very important works. They are not houses but homes where a happy community lives. That is what finally matters. Arania low-cost housing accommodates over 80,000 individuals through a system of houses, courtyards, and the labyrinth of inter internal pathways. Um, so it is possible to build with little money significantly. And this I keep saying, there is no excuse. You cannot excuse yourself for building uh, in, a, in an uninspired way because there was not enough money. No. Now, even with a low budget, you can do a lot. And he did here, you know, uh, you could say, wait a minute, you know, the level of uh, civilization here is not very high, but architecture does not belong to civilization as Alvar Alto said, said it very plainly, but it belongs to culture. Uh, as, as, such, as such, this project belongs to culture not to civilization and this is what counts and this is what the, the this uh, important uh, housing complex was awarded by uh, Aga Khan some drawings for the project we see animals we see you know uh, motorcycle we see bicycles we see people you know represented unconventionally not in the so-called uh, logical uh, perspectival uh, mode that we love so much. Look at this tree, how it is represented, you know, flat on the, on the, why not? Why not? Because it's not uh, objectively represented. Who cares about that objectivity? To me, this drawing is more important and more telling, and it, it allows me to imagine how life here happens than a so-called uh, correct uh, representation or rendering. And these are the buildings. You know, you can you can make uh, good architecture with very little money. This is my my belief. But you just have to to have courage, and uh, and uh, and uh, be, to be inspired. Even the drawing is inspired. Look at the colors. Gone are the white walls of modernity, because we are in India now. And he can be modern, and he was modern, and these buildings are modern, but in an Indian context chromatically Indian. And look at these children, you know, they, uh, they are poor, but, but they are playful and they are together. And, and uh, you know, this is what counts. I love the, you know, a child is here, another one turns her, her head this way, the other sweats from here, there is another girl here. It's a community, there is a dialogue, there, there is curiosity, there is, there is communication between them. And that's what though she was able to do. I think this is one of his best works and uh, is, I'm not surprised he was awarded uh, as, as he was. And I like these scenes of, street, of the street life, you know, uh, they are real, you know. They yes, there there are there is poverty if you want, but uh, I prefer this to the stiffness of uh, you know uh, high end uh, you know uh, housing complexes or uh, you know this is life, it's life and it's not mimicked life. The spirit of architecture is present and is alive. Who cares that you know there are imperfections? That uh, you know the uh, the color is uh, you know affected by the elements. That uh, you know uh, this window is almost blocked. And as a whole, the the spirit of Doshi uh, creating this project is still active. 
and and you see the plans are, are very simple you know again this is social housing you know is one room the second room and you have outside uh, probably you know some uh, service spaces and and that's it and you you have an entrance from here and also you have this uh, you know the back of the building that uh, or apartment allows you to use some space here it's 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 a modest housing but uh, with simple means i think he did a lot and what matters is this uh, this uh, extension of the apartment or the house towards the street this i don't know if i can call it interstitial space not really but it, it's an inter intermediate it's it's an in betweenness here between the privateness of the apartment and the publicness of the street Also, I, I, I think it is worth uh, mentioning that this type of, of house or home, uh, apartment, gets rid of corridors, of all the paraphernalia of, uh, you know, that is used today, and we, we lose so much time, you know. I, I grew up in Sibiu in an old uh, house with old apartments, and it was kind of similar. You can enter even through the kitchen in the apartment why not or directly into the living room you know you cut the cost dramatically uh, and it's not just about the cost i think i think it's very possible to imagine forms of um, collective housing that do not respect uh, the dogmas that uh, are used in in many parts of the world and particularly i would say in uh, in my own country in in essence, this is the uh, the apartment or the house. You know, you you if you live upstairs, you take the stair, you enter in one room, and then from this room you enter into the second room, and that's it. And then you have outside maybe another terrace with maybe uh, you know some toilet or whatever. So it's a, it's a min minimal house, a minimal apartment, but it works. The Kamala House in India, in Ahmedabad, 1959. Now, this is a different kind of house. Of course, this is done with uh, opulence. He was able to do this kind of architecture as well. life insurance corporation housing uh, another you know large housing complex for 1973 uh, i uh, i think in, in in this kind of uh, works he showed his skill and not only as an architect but also i would say as a social worker because his uh, compassion and his interest in uh, in uh, you know solving uh, housing crisis and uh, uh, you know, uh, working, uh, he could have chosen to work just for the elite. No, uh, he worked, yes, when necessary or when he was commissioned, he, he built some 
buildings for uh, those who are well to do, but he also dedicated himself, and I'm sure with a lot of interest and passion, for those, the underprivileged. I think on the 1st of September, that is a few days from now, uh, it will be the birthday of another important Indian architect, Charles Correa. So I will make a presentation on Charles Correa on the 1st of September. It would be interesting to compare Doshi with Correa. Both architects brought modernity to, uh, to the old uh, country and culture of India. Well, some people might be disturbed for, for such things, you know, hanging the clothes on the... But I, again, I, I, I think, uh, as Le Corbusier actually thought, life is always right in the end. So, so then why not? Sangaf, India, Ahmedabad, 1980. This is his own, uh, his own house and studio. Uh, well, well, to do man, of course, but uh, he has his own offices here. Now, <laughs> strangely, perhaps, or maybe not strangely, Le Corbusier's office, I mean, his gurus, office in Paris was much, much, much more modest than uh, it was just a corridor in a, a former monastery on Rue de Sèvres in Paris, Le Corbusier's uh, office. But look what uh, Doshi has. So we will see some images from the interior, I mean, his office. Uh, you see here in the, in the model, the, the desks. Now he has, uh, I imagine, an international uh, group of people uh, working for him and with him. I saw an image where on the left, just like this one, where the, the male uh, employees of Doshi and on the right, the females. Now, I don't know if such a so-called segregation uh, still uh, happens. Now, here he is in his own office. I know he, he recommended, you know, to, to train oneself in the art of finding enjoyment every second of your life, but I, I am tempted to think that he knew something about suffering, that 
maybe he earned this joy, but I don't think he uh, superficially arrived at this joy. No, I think it was an, an earned uh, joy, maybe through sacrifices, maybe through pain, maybe through suffering. It's very possible. But look, his architecture, which is very, you know, uh, so-called civilized and clean and all the rest, was built with a very, you know, modest uh, technology. And here they are. <clears throat> this is uh, <laughs> this is the, the the picture I was telling you about. But who knows? Maybe. Maybe this, these persons here are also uh, males. Anyway, um, yeah, in this one, <laughs> I don't even see uh, females, or maybe there is one. Anyway, maybe I was wrong in what I said. Ahmed Dahvad Ni Gufa, Ahmed 1994. This was designed to demonstrate the collaboration between an artist and an architect. And it's a very interesting project. An underground gallery housing the works of artists, Makbul, Fida, Hussein. Doshi's design was inspired by a discussion between the two that occurred 30 years prior to the project. It was about a response to climate and the benefits of interred spaces, meaning, um, you know, uh, underground. Yeah, or, uh, you know, in turn, I meaning uh, going uh, to a certain depth in the, in the earth. In designing the, the landscape and interest, the architect connects the building to the extended uh, uh, world. And here it is. And I think it's a very fine uh, project. I included it in a presentation I made about the cave, the, re the, the cave revival as a doctoral student here uh, named it humorously but adequately it's kind of a cave it's not a big building but i think it's very ingeniously done uh, you see here black uh, you know uh, uh, you know line thick line well this was actually painted by the by the painter for whom the gallery was built um, and I think he was inspired to do it, you know, this uh, black snake circling or coiling uh, around, uh, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the domes of the structure by, uh, by uh, Doshi. Yeah, here it is again. And I, I, I think the building is very fine. Unfortunately, from what I understood, uh, the artist couldn't quite display. I mean, there are artworks by him inside the gallery, but they built another rectangular building this time to display properly the artworks. And this is the interior. Uh, you know, one would think perhaps of the uh, Guel crypt by um, uh, Gaudi. Uh, all in all, it, it's it's a fine work in my opinion, and. Uh, I wonder, are these, um, you know, outlets, electrical outlets, whatever they are, the, uh, you know, the, the interior space is actually, I find it very nice, very interesting. And the artworks, in my opinion, uh, mingle with the, with the building uh, in, uh, in uh, exciting ways. So the paintings belong to the artist, Hussein, not to Doshi. Doshi just erected the building. Again, with the modest technology, you can build significantly. And this is what we see here. This is a very modest technology, but the result is uh, remarkable. So we shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, 
be enslaved by uh, by technology. The technology is a means; it's not a goal. And we can we can we can even improvise a certain technology to achieve our goal, even if the money is uh, precariously, uh, you know, present in our pockets. And it's possible at the time when he built this uh, gallery, there was no, uh, uh, I don't think uh, he used computers or parametrics or uh, scripting and programming. I think this building is part of the of the school of architecture that he himself founded. And isn't it interesting, this man who didn't study in school architecture, he founded an architecture school and an architecture school that is uh, very well regarded. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, uh, Education shouldn't be about bureaucracy, it should be about an inspiration, about a desire to communicate, to transmit knowledge, the, the desire for dialogue. Interesting that even the building is free in terms of, you know, a manipulation of form and so on, it's dynamic. Still, the artist wanted to contribute himself with this black snake. And uh, uh, why not? You have the architect and the artist, apparently a famous artist in India, uh, who work together on this. The School of Architecture that I just mentioned, the CEPT Ahmedabad, um, was founded by uh, Doshi. And uh, we have a friend here on Zoom, uh, I don't think he's present today, who very often participates to our uh, Zoom meetings. Even yesterday, he was here, but who, who studied in this school. He told us, if I uh, am correct, that there are no entrance doors into this building. Uh, this is interesting also. It's, it's like a sign that Doshi believed in the power of education, which uh, should not have closing doors should be open. Here he is with, uh, with students. Ninety-four years old today. Happy birthday, Mr. Doshi. You can tell he is not older than the others. No. He's ageless. He is young, like, just like them. Le Corbusier said the problem in life is not to remain young, but to become young. And I imagine Doshi did become young. Here are the, the students inside the, you know, an atelier or a studio uh, in the school he founded and built. Vatsal also told us that this, this building is very much conducive towards uh, uh, communication. People uh, uh, meet uh, in, the, in the exterior spaces around the building and uh, it's it's something about the building. It's it's cult. It's it's promoting 
the dialogue, communication. And I think this is a, a quality of uh, not just his housing projects, but also his, uh, the school he made here. A, a campus for creative uh, learning. But the architecture is resolutely modern. Now, the National Institute of Fashion Technology in New Delhi, uh, 1988, this to me is a little bit mundane, the project, but uh, maybe relating to the function. It's a National Institute of Fashion. I personally prefer uh, the building that we just looked at. Um, anyway, he, he built this building as well. Interesting, this uh, blue line here, you know, and culminating or ending here right at the entrance into the building. Why not? A uh, gesture of playfulness. And I think playfulness is important. You cannot have creativity without playfulness. I don't think one can. The Memorial Theater from 1967, this is an older work, uh, Tagore Memorial Theater in Ahmedabad, uh, quite a moving picture. Now, this is a building uh, almost, uh, you know, I mean, very similar to some uh, brutalist buildings built in Japan in the 60s. Uh, anyway, this is in Ahmedabad, but look, look at these scenes, and I, I love this juxt juxtaposition between you know, what this building represents and what the animals represent, why not? It's a, it's a meeting between the urban and the rural. Lots of motorcycles there in, in the present. Exposed concrete. The Indian, the Indian Institute of Management in Bangalore, Bangalore, uh, 1992, inspired by traditional maze-like Indian cities and temples, IIM Bangalore is organized as interlocking buildings, courts, and galleries. It also provides a variety of spaces protected from the hot climate and infuses greenery through semi-open corridors and gardens. And I think, yes, he is good at this, you know, at mingling, bringing together, you know, half enclosed spaces with, uh, with uh, half open spaces, if I can call them so. So you have these interstitial spaces between the, the, the actual rooms that are rooms in themselves, semi-open and very important, like internal or interior streets. Ventilation uh, is helped in this way, and uh, you know, uh, this is important not just in India, but I think everywhere, especially at the time of climate change and what we call sustainability. You know, this is almost like an open air, uh, you know, living room, but semi open, maybe it's more uh, proper to to say it, you know, there are stairways, uh, corridors, and so on. And I'm sure here people gather uh, uh, with great pleasure when, uh, when there are people there.
So it seems indeed that Doshi was sympathetic towards the labyrinth. I made uh, some days ago a, a presentation about the labyrinth in architecture. And I think labyrinths are um, important culturally, aesthetically, even socially. Uh, I think they are very important and psychologically as well. Even spiritually, I think a labyrinth uh, is important. So this is the Institute of Manage Management that uh, Doshi designed and built. Now the Institute of Indology in Ahmedabad, 1959. Uh, this is an early work by him. You know, let's remember, or I don't know if I said it. I think he opened his office in 1956. He worked with Le Corbusier, I think between 1951 and 1954. Uh, and so, you know, very early when he went back to India, he built this work, the Institute of Indology. Uh, it's a more, you know, uh, it's a building that, uh, you know, uh, says I am an institution and I am represented as an institution architecturally. Yeah, he is. Well, what we saw in the Institute of Management, we also see here uh, a little bit different, but we still see these spaces in between, like he had them in the housing complexes we saw. And also, uh, as I said, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the previous building. Exposed concrete, reinforced concrete, uh, some would call it a brutalist architecture, but uh, you know, the, sometimes the sensibility behind the so-called brutalist architecture is not brutal at all. Even though the, the building with its lack of so-called finishes uh, could be evaluated as being uh, brutalistic, but uh, the words are limited. Electronics Corporation of India, this is another housing complex. I like these housing complexes that they are clearly destined to underprivileged people, to poor people, but they have the dignity of a, of a, of a good architecture, I think. I would gladly live myself in such a building, I confess. And look at this, when the vegetation was blooming, I think it's beautiful. Uh, you have the presence of man through architecture, and then you have the presence of God through the trees and the bushes and the sky and the light and the earth, of course. And not too many cars. This is another nice thing. Now this hall in 1976, a good theater is the extension of the most active and creative part of a city. It is a place where all artists meet and re recreate a new image of life. Designed uh, as a public theater, Prema, Prema Vai Hall, a largely concrete building houses an auditorium of vast interior, vast interior corridors and public gathering spaces. This is not one of my favorite buildings by Toshi. It's rather monumental and severe, but you know, he built it.
interesting that the tension and in a way also the distance between the you know the you know these large surfaces of concrete and uh, you know the 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 fragmentarism of the life in 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 the vicinity of the building you know it's 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 a contrast it's a conflict almost I find the building rather imposing and crushing, but anyway, maybe he was aspiring towards a certain level of um, representation, you know, urban representation. The, the Indian farmer fertilizer, another complex of uh, houses, the 90s, no, it's the same one. I'm a little bit confused because I found it under different names. This, this one I already saw, I already showed. But um, I'm confused if there are two different, uh, uh, you know, housing complexes. Anyway, it's the same architecture that he promoted. And I, I think it's very human and very warm. And yet using a, a, not a strict, but, a, you know, a rectangular geometry that is, uh, you know, uh, could have been rigid, but I don't think it is rigid. Nature Health, of course. The National War Museum uh, and Memorial in New Delhi from 2016. This is a, a more recent work, I mean, five years ago. And this was a project. I don't know if it was built. And we arrived at the last work by him, which, in my opinion, um, um, I don't know if I should say it, is. Um, is a project he didn't win but he participated in this competition and um, he i think he he made some concessions to to the newer uh, modes of representation and design um, i personally find this work less inspired than the works he did in india uh, you know it's a lot of glass and uh, no, it's rather sleek, the design, but um, anyway, this is what he did. I mean, he probably thought he was still in India because, you know, these ballerinas here, you know, uh, uh, almost undressed and, uh, you know, uh, Finland is not the warmest country in the world. Anyway, that's it. So let's wish happy birthday to uh, B.V. Doshi. And now, as uh, in connection with uh, with uh, presenting his work, I will show the buildings he worked on for Le Corbusier in uh, Ahmedabad. Uh, so uh, let me uh, change the presentation. I will show the works of Le Corbusier in India, but I also show uh, before. Well, anyway, I will. I don't want to anticipate. It will not be a very long presentation, but I think it's important to see the works of his guru in India, works for which he himself actually worked. Okay, Le Corbusier in India, where he uh, arrived uh, and, uh, and accomplished buildings with the help of uh, B.V. Doshi. But before we go to India, first a short visit near Paris. And the reason I do this is because near Paris, uh, Le Corbusier built uh, a building that is uh, very relevant for what he did in India. And maybe a little bit less known than other works by Le Corbusier, a very important uh, um, form of housing that he invented, uh, uh, Le Maison Jaoul at uh, Neuilly-sur-Seine, uh, near Paris. So let's remember this, Maison Jaoul by Le Corbusier. Uh, though she had nothing to do with this project, but you'll see the relationship between Le Maison Jaoul and uh, um, parts of the, of the work built in India by Le Corbusier with the help of Doshi. 
This is, uh, uh, in my opinion, one of the, the best works by Le Corbusier, also because he combines, it's a hybrid building, combines, uh, you know, exposed concrete with uh, bricks, brick walls, and the, 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 the conjunction between the two, in my opinion, is, is, is beneficial. There is also wood, but all in all, the hybridity of this house is, uh, is very positive in my opinion. Even aesthetically speaking, it, 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 it expresses a richness and a complexity, which in my opinion, uh, sorry, Monsieur Le Corbusier, Villa Savoie didn't have. It didn't have the telluric, the, the tectonics of this building, Villa Savoie, it's too much of a dogmatic so-called white manifesto. This one uh, is, uh, is uh, in my opinion, uh, tectonically superior, and uh, in a way, maybe even more complex, although the manifesto in this case was not written and uh, maybe it might not be easily written. Anyway, it's, it, it's a fine building and you'll see that in India, something of this project and this work uh, uh, um, developed. So this is Maison Jaoul uh, near Paris by Le Corbusier. And uh, remember, please, these interiors, which themselves, in my opinion, are richer than the interiors of Villa Savoie. They are warmer, they are uh, less, uh, less, uh, you know, expressions of a, uh, you know, uh, rigidly almost conceived uh, uh, manifesto. They are warmer, they are more human, they are, they, are, they are more livable in my opinion. There is color, there are various materials. I wish Le Corbusier were, in a way he did in some works, I mean, this shows something about the complexity of Le Corbusier. He was able even to, to, to bite his own tail like the Ouroboros, the mythical snake, in the sense that he was able to, to, to question himself and turn against himself. Excellent work, La Maison Jaoul. Also, what I think is important is that there is a level of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of bringing together the, the, the individual dimension, the, the privateness of what the house is, and also uh, a certain publicness. So the building uh, is both private and public somehow. It has a, uh, this, this element of, collect, of, a, of, a, of a collectivity or a collectiveness even if it's about a few people living here. But I think the building is, is not like Villa Savoie, which is a monument to itself for the glory of, a, of an individuality, of a single name. Here is something else. Somehow the house communicates a desire for, uh, for dialogue, for communication, for uh, bringing together more than, maybe it's also because of the materials you know, the warmth of the brick, which is earth, and which is a common destiny. Even its imperfections, I mean, or their imperfections, these houses, two houses, express, I think, a hybridity which is to be desired and not uh, rejected. And, and in the works in Ahmedabad, you will see something of this. Uh, although it's about a private house or home, but something for, uh, from uh, La Maison Jaoul uh, was able to, um, to arrive in India. So India, Le Corbusier, Le Corbusier and 
to a certain extent, Doshi. Villa Sarabai in Ahmedabad, uh, it's, it's uh, an important work by him. Uh, in fact, all the works he built in Ahmedabad are important. So again, we are in India with Le Corbusier and we talk about Le Corbusier because we talked about Doshi and because Doshi was working on the site, on the building site of these buildings. I am going to show three buildings in Ahmedabad built by, unfortunately, I will not show and I plan to show it um, the Museum of Contemporary Art that he built. Uh, that work I will not show, but I'll show the other three works. This, this house, which is not a small house, uh, uh, Doshi was, uh, was present here, you know, from, uh, from the office of Le Corbusier. He, he helped with, uh, with uh, the implementation of the project here. And again, we see the, the, the magnificence of this natural uh, setting in which a house using concrete and using brick was built. So I know of four buildings that Le Corbusier built in Ahmedabad. I, I will only show three. I will not show the contemporary, the Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, I should have shown it, but it's not in the presentation. Anyway. Now you see this interior. It's very similar to the interior in the Jaoul Maison, the Maison Jaoul. Although there we didn't see uh, Picasso lithograph or whatever it is, but we see it here in India. But it's a very pleasant interior. And again, the, it's a hybrid interior using various materials. There is a sense of uh, an open space, but there are also touches of the local uh, uh, culture, which are also important. And art is present, as it should be. In a house which wants to be a home, what would we do without art? Mm. I don't know who that person is uh, in the swimming pool. I don't think it's Le Corbusier, nor do I think it's Doshi. So Villa Sarabai in Ahmedabad from 1951. Uh, well, at that mm. time, uh, Toshi was, was in India, mm. in, uh, in Paris. He worked from 1951 to 1954 for Le Corbusier. Here is a famous sculptor who appears, how sculptures appear often. In fact, there is a retrospective of his work at the uh, uh, the National Gallery of Contemporary Art in Berlin, designed by Miss van der Rohe. Uh, I'm talking about Alexander Kolder, uh, who was an engineer, but became a very accomplished and, uh, and uh, uh, important um, sculptor. What is he doing there? I don't know. Villa Chaudan, also in Ahmedabad, also by Le Corbusier, also a very important work. Exposed concrete uh, in, a, in a large setting. It's a mm. citadel, it's a fortress, it's a big building. Mm. So he, here, uh, Doshi was present uh, on, on the site of the building and uh, working for Le Corbusier to, uh, you know, to, to bring. Uh, expose concrete and modernity to, to Ahmedabad.
So what we are looking at now, as I said, there are three works by Le Corbusier in Ahmedabad in India, where Doshi, who even now he is in Ahmedabad, he lives in Ahmedabad and his office in Ahmedabad, mm -hmm. before he opened his office, he worked for Le Corbusier here in Ahmedabad after he spent three or four years with him in Paris. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not Le Corbusier, this is actually his cousin, mm. Pierre Jeanre, who uh, worked with Le Corbusier in the Chandigar uh, uh, project. And this is a chair uh, designed and built by uh, Pierre Jeanre, Le Corbusier's cousin. He, had, uh, he was quite a skillful uh, furniture designer, but not only furniture designer. And uh, even after the works in uh, Chandigarh by Le Corbusier were uh, uh, finalized, he continued to live and work in, in Chandigarh, an interesting man. And now this is the last work I will show today, also by Le Corbusier, also in Ahmedabad, the Mill Owners Association building. This is about the building working for the textile industries and a very important building by Le Corbusier. And again, Doshi was here helping uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the progression of the works on the building side. Uh, you see the big banner with the name of Le Corbusier. So this is not a private, I mean, it's, it's a public building with a, it's an institutional building. It's not a private house. But it's, it's, it's a significant building by Le Corbusier on which Doshi uh, contributed. And you are going to see a funny picture with uh, Doshi and Le Corbusier inside this building very soon. Now, please look at this uh, stair. He placed, Le Corbusier placed the parapet on the side where there was also a, a wall, where there is a wall, leaving no parapet on this side, where perhaps functionally speaking would have been much more uh, needed. And you are going to see a picture with, with him and Doshi behind him walking on this stair, but in my opinion, a, be, a, a little bit cautious 
of not falling because this is indeed a, from a functionalist point of view a, a strange uh, choice to place the parapet where there was no need actually for it because there was a wall and not on this side where there was a need for it so here they are <laughs> you see uh, the master walking uh, close to the parapet and close to the wall because if he was close to this side of the stair it would have been very dangerous and doshi ready to help in case the master would have had uh, to pay a price for his adventurous uh, decision it makes me smile always when i look at this picture <laughs> Because it's it's almost a metaphor, a visual metaphor for, uh, you know, sometimes the foolishness of the architect in the name of beauty or in the name of uh, aesthetical interest uh, or innovation or whatever, you know, it's it's the child in architect who decided to place place the parapet here and not here. The monkeys also seem to enjoy themselves inside the building. Cleaning, cleaning up, I guess. A lot of concrete. Mm. A little bit a little bit in need, I would mm. say, of artworks and the textiles, actually. Where are the textiles? This is a building for the people in the textile industry i would have loved to see here you know rugs uh, carpets uh, uh, tapestries and so on where are they because i think so much concrete needs the worms and the woven worms of the textiles the fabrics and i'm very surprised because this building in particular is connected with the textile industry and there is a very long tradition a very rich one a tradition of uh, textile works in Ahmedabad I will make a uh, I will make a suggestion to this because this building needs needs to hang uh, you know tapestries and racks and I don't know if you know Le Corbusier had himself some very beautiful tapestries made based on his designs there are tapestries, so-called signed by Le Corbusier, which are very beautiful. And they would, they would, they would mingle uh, beautifully with the building. This concrete, so much concrete needs, I think, the worms of fabrics. Very much so. I will make the suggestion why one way or another, maybe through our friend Vatsal, who is in Ahmedabad. You'll see also a picture here with uh, with uh, architects from Ahmedabad or somewhere on the roof of, of this building. I think on this uh, on this uh, sloping uh, surface, you are going to see the, the Indian architects very soon. Here they are. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so uh, we are approaching the end of, of the presentation today. An old picture from the 50s with the, with the building and uh, again, the, the, the animals, the sacred animals of India. Thank you. This is, I will not continue. We stop the presentation here. And uh, it was a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, 